Hey, welcome Apple Simps. I'm the Apple Simp here. And you know what today is? April 20th, 2021. Apple Spring Lord event just concluded. Just over an Apple. Lots of great things Apple released today. And I'm going to go over everything, recap everything Apple talked about, tell you about the good Apple juice, the bad Apple juice, tell you my impression on things as the Apple Simp, what I'll be picking up soon, and my thoughts on everything. But first, cue intro. Alright, so first, Tim Cook came on stage. No iconic good morning, so I'm a little disappointed again. Maybe he's changing up what he's doing, but nevertheless. First, talk about Apple services. Talk first about the Apple card. Things that we heard leaks about uh, over the last couple weeks, they came out to be true. So Apple card is expanding to add it, allowing family members on family sharing to use each other's Apple cards. Spouses to have combined credit accounts. Um, that's most likely going to be in features that are going to come out on iOS 14.5 and the update coming out very soon. Um, they call it Apple card family. Right, and they talked about all the impact on the Apple Card and how Apple's goal with the Apple Card is to change how it just change the credit card industry for consumers. Good stuff there. Next, Tim Cook moves on to talk about podcasts. Podcasts got a redesigned app, very similar to Apple's TV app. You can see episodes, see your favorite shows. Apple released Podcast Plus, very similar to Apple TV Plus. It's a subscription service that allows you early access to some of your favorite uh, creators' podcasts, and it gives you a way to support um, podcasters uh, with your subscription service. Good stuff there. More than likely going to be also available in 14.5 of the coming out very soon. Then Apple talked about the iPhone, which is something we didn't hear any leakers talking about uh, any iPhone news coming out for this event besides just some new cases. But uh, we did see a new color of the iPhone 12 and 12 mini uh, in a purple color, very similar to what Apple had in the iPhone 11 last year. Very nice color, nice lavender. Um, it's going to be in stores on April the 30th and it's going to be able to pre order, available to pre order this coming up Friday. Then Apple talked about the Find My Network, something we all knew Apple was going to talk about this event. Apple introduced a new iPhone accessory called AirTag. All the leaks and rumors we've heard about it have all came out true. They're very small, they're like a bottle cap. Uh, they can be attached to anything without accessories that third parties or first party accessories from Apple. Uh, that's how you connect them to things. Um, they uh, have AR tracking, they work with Apple's U1 chip. They use the Find My Network to locate things, um, different Apple devices. Um, help you locate these things without without any privacy concerns. Um, you can personalize them with emojis. And but one thing that we didn't, that not many people were expecting, and no leaker predicted accurately, was the price tag of them. People were expecting, oh, this is an Apple product. They're going to cost well over what the competition does. So you're looking at maybe seventy nine or ninety nine dollars a piece. A uh, prolific leaker, John Prosser, uh, and Max, along with Max Weinbach, recently told us they were expecting them to cost about thirty nine dollars. That was that was that sounded more realistic. But Apple surprised us all today with having was was pricing each AirTag at only twenty nine dollars. You actually get a four pack for ninety nine dollars. It's really good pricing, not unlike Apple. But that's some good Apple news right there. We're happy about that. Um, so yeah, very straightforward, very similar to tr the tile trackers. They're going to be available in the second half of May. Twenty nine dollars a piece. Uh, lots of third party accessories. Ninety nine dollars for a pack of four. Good stuff there. All right, then. Then Tim Cook moved to talk about Apple TV Plus, talk about all their great shows. They do have some good content. Uh, they give a sneak peek at Ted Lasso Season 2. Now my favorite show. Not the best Apple out there, but you know, it's pretty popular. Uh, then Apple talked about the Apple TV 4K. Now we've been hearing rumors about a new Apple TV in the works for over a year now. We weren't expecting it at this event, but we did get a pretty big upgrade to it. It's still called the Apple TV 4K, so it doesn't support 5K or 6K or any other higher resolutions. Um, it does now support an Apple A12 processor, making it much faster than the A10 in the current Apple TV. And that new A12 processor will have a lot of implications on how we use our Apple TVs. Switching between apps will be faster, uh, buffering times will be lower, graphics will be better. So lots of great things with that addition of the A12 processor. On top of the A12 processor, Apple did add support for Wi-Fi 6 on the Apple TV. So once again, it will uh, equal faster Wi-Fi speeds and will make uh, going through your content much faster. So all great stuff there. And also, the Apple TV does now support high dynamic range at high frame rates. Uh, currently, the current Apple TV is only locked to 60 hertz HDR, but now it goes all the way up to 120 hertz. And Apple did mention there will be an upgrade for AirPlay to soon support HDR at high frame rates as well. And uh, by far, the biggest upgrade to the Apple TV is the biggest complaint of the Apple TV. It's remote. I've had it for years. And I've never been a fan of it. It's always been too small, too minimalistic, could do a lot more, got lost very easily, very fragile. I was not a fan of it. But now the newer Apple TV does have, does come with a full, 
aluminum unibody remote with a more accurate touchpad because the total touchpad was very inaccurate. It does have a spinning scroll wheel similar to the older iPods. Let's look at back in the day. And Apple says this is going to be used for your scroll going back and forth in your video streams. So it's going to make that a lot easier. Uh, it does now have a side mounted Siri button, just like on the iPhones. Uh, it does seem to have a lot more heft to it, which is something really good that will make it not as easy to lose as before. And on top of the remote, there is a power button for controlling the power of your TV. So Apple's trying to pitch this as the one remote to rule them all. It does TV controls, it does your Apple TV remotes, it does home controls because it has Siri in it, and of course the Apple TV is still a home hub, so all great stuff there. So overall, fantastic upgrade to the Apple TV. And we're seeing a lot of good stuff from this, and I for one am very excited to be picking one of these up. It will be replacing my current Apple TV 4K, and the Apple Tim give this a good Apple. This is some of the best Apple juice. Great Apple juice there. And next, Apple moved on to talk about something we've all been very excited for. We've been hoping for, wishing for, and hearing about for over a year now. Brand new IMAX. And I, for one, have some reservations about this. So I'm going to put the design up on the display now. And design looks fantastic. It looks like what a lot of people described it as, as an iPad Pro on a stand that looks very similar to the Pro Display XDR's stand. So design isn't bad from that angle. However, from the front, it looks a little bit off. As we all know, the older uh, iMacs look like this. Black, thick bezels around the glass part and towards the bottom with the aluminum uh, bar at the bottom. It had an Apple logo on it. Now, no more Apple logo, but still a very thick aluminum bar across the bottom of the iMac. Matching the colors, and now it does come in seven different colors, as you see right here. Uh, but then the, the bezels, they get significantly thinner. That's why they're able to bump the size from 21 and a half inches to 24 inches but they're white. Apple hasn't had a device with white bezels in a long time, other than like their, their iPod Touch and the entry-level 8th generation iPad. Uh, other than that, they haven't had any ma many white bezel products. I'm not sure why Apple chose white bezels for this. Um, nevertheless, the iMac is fantastic. It does have a... Uh, it does run an M1 processor. It does have Thunderbolt ports. Overall, they said it is about 50% smaller in volume. Only 11.5 millimeter thin, very impressive. Resolution of the display is 4.5K, so not 4K, not 5K, 4.5K, which was interesting. Never heard that before. 11.3 uh, million pixels. Uh, and then one of the things that people have always complained about IMAX is the FaceTime cameras. Now it's about the 1080p HD camera, so really good quality, big improvement over the previous gener generation uh, FaceTime cameras in the Max. Um, microphones. A three studio microphone array so is going to be very good at capturing audio and has beam forming as well so it won't pick up much background noise. For the speakers, a six speaker system. Not a four speaker system like the iPad Pro, but a six speaker system. It does support also Dolby Atmos and spatial audio, something we've only seen on the AirPods thus far. So it's a fantastic speaker system and also two noise cancelling subwoofers. So audio on this thing is going to be fantastic. Excellent microphones. Fantastic video from the camera, great speakers, no doubt about that, excellent stuff. 85% faster CPU over the previous base model 21.5 inch iMac, but no surprise there. I mean, really, who's surprised about that? We've seen the M1, it's a monster of a processor. Two times faster GPU than the highest end 21.5 uh, inch iMac with discrete graphics. Uh, it, uh, the, new, the new iMac can support up to five 4K streams at the same time, or one 8K stream. That's going to open up a lot of doors. V really professional machine. Uh, starts at $12.99. Can be available in uh, the second half of, of May. And before I move on to the next thing, I do want to mention that Apple didn't mention anything about two sizes for this iMac. Now, if you ask me, the Apple Simp, I'll tell you that the, I, I, I am very certain there will be another iMac variant later on in the year. More than likely, Apple saving that for uh, a new M Apple Silicon processor. That one's going to be more the, the Pro iMac, much higher specs, uh, maybe even a 32-inch display, um, other things like that. Apple's still saving that for, well, in my opinion, new Apple Silicon, e even more powerful than the M1 processor. But as of right now, there's only one size of the iMac, 24 inches, the seven colors I showed you starting at $12.99. Different configurations, of course, but that's the only size of it. And Apple does say they will continue to sell the 27-inch previous generation Mac uh, alongside the new 24 inch Mac. So really interesting moves with the Macs there. Up until last night, we weren't 100% sure we we're gonna see it today. Some reports are saying no Mac to this event at all, but very glad that we saw uh, great stuff. Like I said, 
side profile, excellent. Front, des front uh, design of it, not too happy about it. Colors are excellent. Pricing seems pretty fair. Uh, huge spec bumps. Um, and it's overall a great machine. Uh, I won't be picking one of these up just because uh, my main workstation is an, a Mac Mini connected to a TV, and I have no need for a um, an all-in-one desktop like the iMac. But excellent machine. I do recommend it to a lot of people though. Alongside the new iMac, Apple did also update all the accessories for the iMac. So the Apple Magic Mouse, uh, no hardware changes to, to from what we saw, but uh, color options matching the iMac colors. Same thing for the Magic Trackpad, and also the Magic Trackpad did say they did get a angle change uh, to match the new to match the new uh, keyboard. And speaking of the keyboards, the Magic Keyboard was also upgraded three different models. Uh, one standard model like you got with the IMAX before, but now with new buttons, one for Do Not Disturb and one for Dictation. Another one with Touch ID, which is definitely going to be pretty pricey, but you can finally get Touch ID for the IMAX via the Magic Keyboard. And a third one without Touch ID, but with a number pad. After finishing uh, talking about the iMac, Apple had an amazing segue, which I would call one of the absolute best transitions in videography history to the new iPad Pro. They didn't just say back to Tim and then Tim could pass it on to someone else to talk about the iPad like we, we expect Apple to do with their transitions. No, they had this fantastic video of a guy uh, sneaking into an Apple um, R&D department, stealing the M1 processor out of a MacBook Air and sneaking back into another design lab, which I assume was like someone from Microsoft or Google because they're talking about not everyone, not just Mac users want the M1 processors, but no, it turned out to be uh, the skies. The guy took off his, uh, uh, his mask, turned out to be Tim Cook. He put that M1 processor in iPad Pro, and that's how they transitioned into talking about the new iPad Pros. Like I said before, one of the best transitions and segues in videography history. A very creative and absolutely great Apple juice right there. Fantastic. Apple Simp definitely approves of that. Two thumbs up. Uh, the new iPad Pro, no surprise, does support the M1 processors. For now, in a 6mm thin iPad, you'll get the same processing power as a giant 24-inch iMac. That is incredible. Uh, the, Apple, the M1 processor is really opening new doors for CPU performance and GPU performance. It's incredible stuff. New iPad Pro comes the same size as 11 inches and 12.9. It support the M1 processor up to two terabyte storage option. It was all uh, as before. You have a 128, 256, 512, one terabyte option, and now also with the high end, you have a two terabyte option. Uh, they do support now five uh, 5G connectivity. Great stuff there. Uh, and in the US, four millimeter wave. We've heard that Apple in the 2021 iPhones, they will bring millimeter wave to more countries. But as of right now, millimeter wave on the iPad is going to be limited to only the US. But other countries, you will get 5G support for sub-6. So good stuff there. 16 um, gigabyte of RAM option. Now, I went to the Apple Store app, looked at the configurations. There's no uh, there's no option to configure the, uh, the RAM. But what I'm guessing is that it's going to have 6, maybe possibly upgraded to 8 gigabytes of RAM on all storage options. Except for the 1 and 2 terabyte options. Those will come standard with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Because when you have all that kind of storage, you have higher needs. And to manage all that storage, you're going to need a lot more RAM than just 6 or 8 gigabytes. So more than likely 16 gigabytes of RAM is only going to be available on the 1 and 2 terabyte option. All the other ones will have uh, built in 6, possibly upgraded to 8 to gigabytes of RAM. Uh, the port on the uh, on the iPad is still USB-C. We didn't get you know, an extra port like I was hoping for, but nevertheless, it does still have one USB-C port, but now it supports Thunderbolt and USB and USB 4. So incredible speed is going to really increase the bandwidth of things you can transmit, the kind of content you can transmit through that port. Great stuff there, and it's definitely going to open up doors for a lot for a lot more content and a lot more to be done on the on the iPad Pros. The new display is, of course, as we we're expecting, a mini LED display. Now only on the 12.9 inch, not the 11 inch, and it's and I, I feel like Apple didn't want to do that, but they had to because of the yield rates. Mini LED is right now a very expensive technology, very hard to make, and the the, uh, the 12.9 inch uh, iPad Pro doesn't sell the same volumes as the 11 inch, so. I guess Apple made the executive decision to only leave that for the the larger iPad. Um, so only a higher one gets has a um, LED display. The smaller 11-inch iPad Pro display wasn't talked about at all. We do know it's still a, li a liquid LCD display. Uh, but the higher, the 12.9-inch iPad Pro with Mini LED does now support XDR, a thousand nits of uh, of sustained brightness, 1600 nit nits of peak brightness. Same effect we're seeing on the on the uh, Pro Display XDR, that's amazing stuff. I can't believe on iPad you'll be getting a big, you'll be getting such a bright display like that. Um, the previous iPad, uh, 
the previous iPad only had 79 LEDs in the display. The new one has over 10,000 LEDs in the 12.9 inch display. So lots more LEDs, uh, more LCDs, 2,500 local dimming zones, 1 to 1 million contrast ratio, ultra wide, 1 to 1 million contrast ratio. Incredible stuff. This stuff we never saw. We we, we expect this from uh, uh, reference monitors. Never would I have expected to get this kind of a display on an iPad. Along with the display, it is a uh, very similar thinness to before, 6.4 millimeters, 1.5 pounds, very thin and light. And now the, the front-facing camera has been updated to a 12 megapixel ultra-wide front camera that supports a center stage, what Apple calls center stage. Uh, from the demonstration, it's very similar to the Facebook portal, how you can be on a FaceTime call and when you're moving around, the ultra-wide camera follows you, keeps you in the center of the of the frame. So that's going to be really good for you know for video conferencing, Zoom calls, family calls. Of course, Apple brought develop made a video showing tons of developers talking about the new iPad Pros, how how incredible it is, and how it opens up more doors for them. Apple did make mention in that video. Apple did make mentions to Final Cut Pro. Oh, so I don't know if that's going to be just the iPad version, the little bit watered down version that they talked about about a year ago, uh, or is it going to be a full fledged one like we've been seeing? Because now the iPad with an M1 processor. So uh, can support that and with all, all the RAM that now it supports it does support that so it'll be really interesting to see if Apple can bring a full version of Photoshop and things like Echo, uh, Xcode and Final Cut and uh, those professional apps to the iPad now with all this with all the new processing power it has and with that Apple actually wrapped up the event the pricing of them is going to be $799, $799 for the uh, for the 128 gigabyte 11 inch iPad same as before the 12.9 inch got a price bump it went from starting at $999 to $1099 but it is justifiable with all the new technologies found in it. But if you go to the Apple Store app, you can see that 12.9 inch iPad Pro does now go up to a whopping $2,200. That includes two terabytes of storage, 16 gigabytes of RAM, cellular connectivity, 5G support, uh, and the largest 12.9 inch size. That's before the new Magic Keyboard that Apple uh, introduced, before Apple Pencil, before anything like that. So you're looking at a very, very pricey device, but it is used by professionals. For a lot of people, it is replacing their MacBook Pros and it's an excellent machine on the go. It's very powerful, and now it's almost as powerful as the M1 MacBook Air and Pro, and much faster than most of the Windows uh, machines you can buy out there for around the same price point. So, very incredible stuff. Uh, my take on it, very solid event. Very concise, very to the point. Almost exactly at an hour in time. Uh, lots of great stuff. The leakers were pretty accurate about everything we saw. We knew there was going to be a 12.9 inch iPad and an 11 inch, only 12.9 inch getting L mini LED. We knew about the uh, uh, pretty much everything that was told, told us about it. The AirTag was completely accurate. Shout out to John Prosser for showing us these back in September, accurate renderings of them. Um, the iMac was pretty much everything we expected. The color options that John Prosser showed us. Um, redesigned M1 processor, amazing machine. We, and just a few weeks ago, we did hear there was not going to be a 27 inch iMac released at this event. Apple's going to probably save that for later in the year to introduce a new version of the M processors of Apple Silicon or, and having a much more professional iMac uh, with higher end specs. Uh, Apple TV, exactly what we saw. We weren't expecting it at this event, but we got it, but all the leaks and rumors about it were absolutely correct. Uh, others that find my network were correct. The new iPhone color was unexpected, but great to have. Uh, the Apple card updates, we heard about those a month ago, and we finally got them. Overall, leakers, I would say, the leakers from Mark Gurman to John Prosser to Love to Dream, all the leakers that we've been following the last couple of months had about an 85% accuracy rate. Except for the date of the event, <laughs> another shout out to John Prosser out there. But, nevertheless, we got the event today, it was all great stuff, we got some, we got lots of new Apple juice to sip on, and we got a lot of great stuff. Personally, I will be, I will be updating the iOS 14.5 the day it's available and getting all those new features, the Apple, the the new Apple Card features, uh, and all the and all the Find My features. I will be picking up at least one AirTag and one accessory, one holder for it just to try it out. Based on how I feel about it, I'll, I'll pick up more. But as of right now, I don't have much of a need for them. New iPhone color is good, but I am locking a 12 Pro Max as my main device, so I won't be picking up the new iPhone color. Uh, an iMac, I won't pick the one up personally, not because I have any problem with it, just because my main machine now is, a, is an M1 Mac Mini connected to this TV up here. So that's my main workstation. So no need for an iMac. Uh, I will be picking up an Apple TV 4K as soon as possible. That new remote looks fantastic. The new processing power will open up a lot more doors for Apple Arcade, so that's going to be really good. I'll be picking one of those up. Uh, and iPad Pros, I'm indecisive. I am indecisive about that, ladies and gentlemen. 
Uh, it is an amazing machine. There is no doubt about it. No one can say it's the same as the last one. It is a little bit pricey. And, and I currently have a 2020 iPad Pro 12.9 with Slayer, 256 gigabytes of storage. It's incredible. Um, so that one in the air about, but nevertheless, incredible machine. And that wraps it up, guys. So and at one Apple event, lots of new products, software, hardware, services, everything. Um, and then next Apple event is going to be WWDC 2021. It's slated for June. Um, and yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about Apple's event and what you're going to be picking up. Or follow me, the Apple Simp, on Twitter. I'll put the link in the description uh, and on Instagram uh, to keep track of all the all the latest Apple juice, the good and the bad Apple juice. And and so we can all join together and simp over the Apple. That's going to be it for me, guys. Stay simping. Sip on that Apple juice. And I'll catch you next time.